you have found what lights you up. I'm your host, Sunny the Life Coach, and I'm here because I see you searching for something or someone out there to help you feel better, something to take away the pain that you're feeling, the inadequacies. I know all of the things that happen in life can leave you feeling empty. Your search is over. This podcast is all about finding your own freedom and power to love yourself enough to shine in the ways you were always meant to, the ways in which you are already fully capable of. If you're ready for some real talk, some serious truth bombs, and a few F-bombs, you are in the right place. Let's do this. Let's get lit. Hey there and welcome. I am so grateful that you pressed play today. I thought I would build on the whole when you feel concept. I've done a few of these now. When you feel broken. Most recently, when you feel like a failure. And I thought it would be a good time to touch on conflicted as a feeling. I do think it's a feeling. It comes up when we are truly challenged to explore our values, our beliefs, the way that we identify what's right and wrong, which is a conundrum in itself because the notion of right and wrong is a human construct, really. Let's talk about one of the many stories that have come out of Ukraine in the past few days since Russia has invaded this country. I can't think of a better example of feeling conflicted myself. That's what I've been feeling. And I think when it really hit me was the sunflower seed story. Now, in case you didn't see this and you wonder why sunflowers are all over social media, including my own, it's because of a viral video of an elder Ukrainian woman having herself a little conversation with a Russian soldier. The sunflower is, of course, the flower that represents this country and served as inspiration for their flag. The blue is the sky and the yellow is representative of a field of sunflowers. So damn cool. I can't unsee that now. So what this woman said to the Russian soldier with a very calm demeanor, I might add, she offered him some sunflower seeds. She said something along the lines of, here put these in your pocket so at least sunflowers will grow when you all lie down here. And there have been variations of the translation, but I'm going with lie down. We know what she means. Lie down permanently. Fertilize those fields. That is probably the moment that I felt most conflicted. Because everyone's celebrating, saying what a badass this woman is. And I completely agree. I reserved my own sunflower display for a day or two while I just sat with it. I couldn't stop thinking about that young soldier. I was pretty sure he didn't ask to be there. But that's what happens when you are in the military. You get your marching orders and there is no question you go. You are owned I absolutely hold the highest regard for those who enlist, and I don't know enough about Russia to know whether they are even given a choice. Certainly, Ukrainians hadn't been given a choice. If you are able-bodied, you stay to fight and defend your country. It is a wild thing to witness in an age where we are so plugged in to real-time in information. And we have to be mindful of our binging as well. That takes some discipline when the world is on fire, doesn't it? I think it hits especially hard because I do have a niece and nephew in the military. I also have a son who at 13 is all about being ready to enlist himself. And the thought just makes my heart ache. Yes, There's plenty of time for him to change his mind, or not. There's plenty of time to become even more deeply committed. 
I just know how much he loves to stay up late and sleep in, so we'll see if he's willing to sacrifice. Time will tell, of course. So I think of the soldier in that scenario, too. I'm sure a lot of moms out there do. I'm just not hearing from them. I only see and hear about the sunflower seed lady and what a badass she is. That's where I feel somewhat conflicted because I see her badassery while also feeling compassion for the soldier. The thing is, it doesn't have to be an emotional conflict. The conflict really only arises when you take the approach that you have to choose a side, one or the other, this or that. It can't be both. I mean, you hear all of the phrases all the time. You're either with me or against me. You're either right or you're wrong. You can't be both. Is that true, though? Is it always true? That might be a better way to frame the question. Is it always true? This is a great time to remind ourselves that life, living this life, living each day, is truly comprised of choices. All day, every day, we are choosing. And a lot of the time, it does have to be this or that. Think about the phrase, I can't be two places at once. When you have a conflict in terms of schedule, your availability, and perhaps your desire to do one thing over another, you have a choice to make. It really is either or. It really is this or that. What tends to get lost a lot of times for us humans who are doing our humaning and performing as best we can with the way that we were trained, what tends to get lost is the nuance of our experience. We are faced with a choice and automatically revert to, well, it's this or that. And we are also very tribal as a species. Many of us don't want to take on the unpopular opinion. Although, I will give humanity a huge shout out for having done that very thing in a next level kind of way over the past couple of years, living in times of a pandemic. It has gotten supercharged at times, hasn't it? And I have found this to be so fascinating. This is the first pandemic in the history of the world that has been so well documented in terms of the media that we have available to us, the sources of information. It's freaking wild. And we, as humans, picked sides. And we've been picking political sides for many years now, though it is certainly amped up like nothing I've ever known. My husband King and I talk about this every now and then, like when we were growing up, we really didn't know the political affiliation of our friends and even our own families. Now it's like we're going to wear hats and t-shirts, carry signs and wave flags so that everyone knows where we stand. I'm telling you, it's freaking fascinating to bear witness. As I find myself saying more and more often What a time to be alive. Just wild. Okay, back to the nuance in dismantling the notion that every choice that we make has to be this or that. It has to be right or wrong. I went through this a little bit with my hair. Shall I keep it blonde or color it pink? This or that. And it's so crazy to me that I spent five hours at the salon to eventually strip the pink out only to ask my stylist a couple of months later to put some streaks back in. (laughs) I mean, she has to love me. I actually get compliments on my hair all the time. Chelsea girl, you are amazing. Shout out to Chelsea. She fucking rocks. But that's an example, right? I made a choice to go from full blonde to full pink and I loved it. After about a year, I thought, Why not both? Can we do both? Seriously, why not? There's nuance to so much of what we do, but I think our means or methods of communication could use some updating. 
because it's become so ingrained in us that it has to be this or that, either or. We take these broad strokes and label people. We make assumptions about them based on one thing that we know, like their political leanings, for example. But what if we didn't? What if we just saw one another as humans? What if wearing a mask in the early days of the pandemic didn't fuel all of this vitriol? Like, obviously, those who wear masks are terrified and they are sheep. Versus those who don't wear masks don't give a fuck about anyone but themselves. And I say this like these judgments have ceased. They haven't. I just want to recognize that and use it as an example of where nuance and context come into play. Some things we don't often consider. Broad brush stroke judgments. I don't think humans exist to be put in boxes and categorized like that. We don't know the stories behind the choices that another has made to mask up or not, and also to put them in boxes around political leanings. Just unnecessary, but nevertheless, here we are. I'm dropping hints about political leanings for a couple of reasons. First of all, I am quite sure that I have recently mentioned meeting a new friend here as a random encounter in a parking lot that turned into a lunch date, some book recommendations, and a whole lot of text exchanges. I love her. I enjoy being in her energy. And pretty early on, we outed ourselves around where we lean politically. I don't even recall how it came up as a topic of conversation, which is so great about it that neither of us were deterred by having opposing leanings in that area. We still met for lunch (laughs) and we still had amazing conversation for hours. So much to talk about. You all, That's how it's supposed to be, in my opinion. The second thing I want to share with you about political affiliation is that I recorded a conversation with my friend Kate this morning. If you are not already subscribed, please do that now because you're going to want to hear this one for sure. If you have been a listener, you may already recognize that when I have guests here, I just let the conversation flow organically and allow it to be whatever it needs to be. So I asked Kate to come on and talk about yoga as a healing modality for trauma, since she is a bona fide certified badass yoga teacher with full body tats who loves to drop the F-bomb as much as I do. <laughs> Hell, Kate herself is a model of what we don't necessarily expect a yoga teacher to look like. That's it. Just seeing her is wild in itself. And I don't know how it happened. Well, I do know it was meant to happen. That she shared a story of a conversation she had with another human at the polls recently who clearly held opposing beliefs, and it was a positive conversation. Wow, yeah. That can happen. Nuance, context, and simply seeing another human in his or her glory. Period. When I say we are a tribal species, yes, indigenous people would kill each other over tribal affiliation. Wars have started over affiliation. We are literally witnessing that happening today. We are witnessing the complexities of war. And you know what else we are witnessing? We are witnessing the complexities of humanity. You know, another video I happened to catch this morning was of a Russian soldier who had surrendered. I am going to try to hold myself together as I recap this for you. Because what the video showed was a Ukrainian woman connecting this soldier to a video chat with his mother and he was eating food and drinking warm tea. Don't know what's going to happen to him later, but in that moment he was being cared for, fed, and connected to home by the enemy in the very country he was sent to invade. He was ordered to invade 
And you all, he just cried. It was so very surreal. He was crying as he was still eating and drinking, which told me how very hungry he must have been. And you could say, well, it's probably fake, whatever. Maybe it is. I don't need to dissect everything I see in that way. That's not a thing I was interested in. And I do trust the source of this video. That's all beside the point. Just wanted to include that note. Because, you see, I'd already decided to hold love and honor for those soldiers. I'd already come to that decision. It took me a day or so to process the sunflower seeds, but I had already decided. That's, that's the choice that I made. So to see that glimpse of humanity across the board this morning, well, that sealed the deal for me, and I knew what I would have to talk about today. Now, I know it's so freaking interesting that I have talked about choices between everything from hair color to surrendering in war. I hope you can glean from this that what I'm trying to help you understand is that internal conflict only exists when you think in binary terms of right or wrong, this or that. I had to dig a little to understand why I couldn't just jump right on board with the invitation to place sunflower seeds in that man's pocket. I mean, sometimes it is a very obvious connection and your instinct kicks in and you just go with it, flow with it. And other times, your soul just might chime in and say, time out, take a breath. How do you really feel about this? And understand that it doesn't always have to be this or that. Maybe the seed woman can be a total badass and the Russian soldier can receive your compassion. Maybe Ukrainian people are wonderful on camera and performing their own atrocities behind the scenes. We don't really know. It's not always about what is true or right from the collective. It's really about what is true or right for you in this moment. And stop and think for a moment about not only what it is that you are truly seeing with your eyes, but also with your heart and soul. Like my friend that I met in the parking lot last month, there was something about her energy and I knew, I just knew we could jam for hours and we did. It was a beautiful thing. And by the way, you can change your mind. You can make a choice tomorrow morning and you can make another choice by the afternoon. A lot of these aren't hard lines and might not even be as complicated as your mind is making it out to be. To be fair, if you're listening to this podcast, you are probably not out on a battlefield in a conflict that you don't really want to be in. It's all about perspective, my friend. And we can choose sides all day long and say this is right and that is wrong. We can be swayed by popular opinion or social media, by our own family and friends, but ultimately the conflict arises from inside of you because something about it just isn't true for you. Something is out of alignment with your own values and beliefs. That is what you need to explore. As Rumi says, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you, a joy. That is what I'm getting at and what I wanted to share with you today. That's where the rubber meets the road or where I meet you as your coach. This is where it's at. I'm telling you, your life can change. You can make shifts that you never thought possible. No matter what is happening in the world around you, when you connect to your own soul, to the very essence that is you, then you have a knowing. Then you find your truth. And you may not be completely unshakable, 
because things are going to happen, but you will be able to rebound much faster. You will be able to experience that joy that I'm talking about. Send an email to sunnythelifecoach at gmail.com and let's set up a time to have a conversation about whatever it may be that has you feeling conflicted. We're going to navigate those choices, challenge ourselves. We're going to light up. We are going to shine on.